Don't cry no more, my dear. Don't you cry no more. I'll be waiting here, my dear. I'll be at your door. Do you hear me knocking? Do you hear my drum to draw you from your fortress? It's been Two, one. We are live. What's up, everybody? We're You're here. You're still alive. alive. Oh. <laughs> Y'all want to do that again? <laughs> you want to do that again? <laughs> You're still alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What's up, everybody? Those, we're here, those. and we're live. But um, <laughs> shout out to. Uh, our girl Georgia said excellent. She was watching the um, Georgina. Georgina. Georgia. Georgia. Yeah, Georgina. <laughs> Georgina. Uh, we just met. We met her at the airport. Oh yeah. Uh, she's from the UK. Um, she just was checking, and she said, uh, "Beautiful job, guys." And uh, thank you. I think she was talking about release, but um, thanks for for popping in. Um, yeah, we're here. We're gonna get it started. You're watching Young Lion TV. <laughs> Young lion, young lion, everywhere I look, they die. Everywhere I look, they die. Young lion, young lion, everywhere I look, they die. Everywhere I look, they die. Young lion, young lion, won't you get up and stop fighting? Everywhere I look, they're hiding. Young lion, young lion, you live. Young lion, you rich. <laughs> yeah. This kingdom has room. Go, Go and find people, people now. Yeah. What did you say? <laughs> Go and find people now? Yeah, is, is that Go and invite people in. <laughs> Go and invite uh, people in. Uh, I don't know the lyrics. <laughs> you know, I always <laughs> jack up words. You know. It's all right. <laughs> it was funny because they don't even rhyme. It's like... <laughs> Go, go find, go people, find people now. <laughs> <laughs> go expedite and find those accordingly. And <laughs> Tell them thusly. Sorry, man. I don't care about embarrassing myself. <laughs> no. You know? <laughs> What's that? Yeah. <laughs> That's so we got, we got a, a, a kind of laid back episode. We're going to touch on a couple things from Twitter, a couple things going on in the news, but nothing crazy. Um, we're not going to get too deep today. We're going to have a little fun, talk about some stuff. I got Moan with me rocking the Jatan merch. I love it. I love <laughs> yeah. it. The back to life You guys shirt. can't really see, but did we ever talk about how there's lyrics there? Yeah, you can see on the T. <laughs> <Don't do that. laughs> <laughs> his little what? Oh, yeah. of, course, of course, his this guy was <laughs> right. <laughs> of his course, mind, he, his he mind sees it that there. way. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know you watch too much porn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Is that necessary? <laughs> we got we got Stan here rocking the Bob Marley shirt. Yeah. I love it. I had one of those on today earlier. I like that shirt, man. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, that's uh, I think Old Navy's collectible. Uh, that's that's I from know. that that epic <laughs> promoting them. <laughs> it's, from, it's from old and them, old, old, old and them, them. <laughs> old, old and them. You know, you yeah, know, we, old them. Yeah, we're not shouting out no corporate yeah, sponsors. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I I know that that sh- that's from the um that looks like it's from the Africa show, that big one, that, the live one, the live one that yeah. they always showed the video from. Mm. Um. Epic concert. Um, Jake's rocking the USA. 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 Uh, <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, USA. Yeah. USA yeah. shirt. Uh, <laughs> Jake's in the building with us. Uh, shout out to our manager, David. Um, his son, David Still Jr., mm-hmm. is on the U.S. Um, team for rugby mm-hmm. and doing his thing. Just scored scored twice 
at their last game against France. Yeah. Nice. Um, the world he, stage. He's doing his thing, he's man. His he's thing. making his name. Only been playing rugby for a few months mm -hmm. with people that have been playing all their lives, mm -hmm. and he's already super impactful. He's turning heads. Yeah. His Natural first, his talent, first game, what he was turning heads. Yeah. Yep. It's, yeah, that's, that's a, uh, a very yeah. applaudable feat to he, be able to step into something Funny like story. That. He did an he did an interview, which we we know David growing yeah. up. He's like that quiet yeah. type of kid. Yeah. But you watch him like, yo, he's he grew up. He grew he, up. He man. grew up. And he's so he's, freaking huge. Yeah. Now. yeah. <laughs> I remember yeah. you know beating him at Madden when he was little and now <laughs> yeah. he's beating people up at rugby. On the right. Um yeah. But we got John John and Kyle with us producing right now. Shout out. What up? Thank you guys for joining Don't us. Don't ever do those hands again. Yeah. Here. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, guys. We're we here. are men here. <laughs> <laughs> Lions don't we do, that. do this. We got Kyle. <laughs> we got, I'm like, we got Kyle with us. He's come on, dude. <laughs> Hi, guys. I was trying, right. to, I yes, was trying right. to show the words. Next time you shout me out, I'm like, hey, what's up? <laughs> 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 it's always great to be here. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, so before we went live, we were talking a lot about somehow randomly what, what, what sparked the conversation. We were talking about music. We were talking about a bunch of songs. You were showing a Drew Hill um, cover of Tears for Fears. Somewhere along never... the way, we were talking about artists that kind of rip off other artists without giving them credit. Yeah. And then I played a song called Human Nature. Uh, or human condition. I was about to say. So they even stole the title. <laughs> no, <laughs> man. Human condition that ripped off um, Tears for Fears. Um, Everybody wants to rule the world. Right. And then I uh, showed you a version of uh, that of Everybody Wants to Rule the World by Drew Hill. Yeah. And you kind of called without actually hearing it what it was going to be what it was going to be <laughs> yeah. and it was just that right. a lot of ooh yes and yeah, yeah. runs and right <laughs> right over over singing uh, right. totally destroying the melody that made the song what it was right, right. but exactly. um there you know but somehow that got sparked us into music yeah. and then somehow Jake started singing end of the road yeah Something so happened. Simone said something. said something about unity, right? Or together. We got we to gotta come together. Right? <laughs> yeah. And then I sang, we belong. We belong. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then as he's going through the lyrics, I'm just sitting there thinking like, man, what a whiny ass song. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, just the content of it. Like, Somebody every, pull up the lyrics. <laughs> everything about it. We belong together and you, you know, know that, that I'm right. right. <laughs> why do you play with my heart and why do you play with my mind? You don't need the lyrics, Jamie. We, <laughs> we got Jamie. We got Jamie. Yeah, we should be forever. forever. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> the worst part for me is the talking part. Yes. Mike's part, yeah. talking part. Yeah. I, I, I knew you were cheating. Why do and, you? But it's, no, he's talking about the girl. No, but I'm just saying. Hey, so he's I'm going sorry, back I'm to going the wine. Yeah. Because it's just the way they sing it. Yeah. Too. Why do you play with my heart? Why do you play with my Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Should we be forever? So whiny. <laughs> but Should it never die? I was thinking about that. Like, this was this is what affected us as kids. Yeah, you know? yeah. And a generation. And you think about like the intention of that song. Really, probably wasn't the way they were feeling. It was probably just to get some women, right? You know what I mean, like, right? So, this is what women want to hear, right? So women yes. want to hear men be sappy on a record, right. even though real, women don't really want their men to be like that in real life. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Which is the the conundrum right. of it? They want a because, temporary feeling there, right? Women want to hear you, that on a song, but if they're with a guy that's really whining like that, <laughs> they immediately don't want him they anymore. Disrespect him, yeah. mm -hmm. you yeah. know. And that was Babyface. Yeah, it was Babyface. And he wrote a whip appeal. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm never keeping secrets, girl. Yeah, I'll I'm never, never tell a lie. lie. <laughs> like everything is always like, like, like I'm so yeah. sorry. Don't leave me. Oh my God. You know. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And I think like a lot of um. Damn. I love the, I love Babyface. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Yo, I, that's the sound of like, R and B night. Yo, End of the Road was one of them songs that really shaped me as like loving R and B, loving groups. Like mm -hmm. I remember yeah. hearing End of the Road. Yeah, I love that song. But yeah, but looking back on it, it's yeah. like right uh, at we that were time, under a spell. You didn't understand even what the lyrics. I never really even. No. This is the, like as you were singing it, it was the first time I ever thought about what the lyrics were <laughs> really saying. 
Like mm-hmm. to me, it was like I knew all the lyrics, I could sing them yeah. all, but I never put the story together. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It was just like, oh, it's just a great song, yeah. great melody, great chord changes. You know, I harmonies. just never liked the talking part. I yeah, thought, right, right. like talking parts and songs are always a bad idea. I'm talking about what he's saying. Yeah. I always was like. Really, dude? <laughs> yeah. yeah, all them times you would run around with the mother fellas. Baby, I knew about I it. I knew about it. I just, I just didn't, didn't care. care. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really? here for you. <laughs> and then he comes in behind him like he's behind his shoulder. <laughs> Girl, Isn't I it? just want you to come back. <laughs> you know that, right? <laughs> I can't get off me. <laughs> Let me do my part. Damn, why aren't you don't stop singing? <laughs> trying to do my talking part right now. <laughs> Weren't they singing? Lo- That's why he ain't in the group no more. Right, <laughs> right, right. But then after that, it's like, after he does that. Lonely. Yeah, right. lonely. Girl, my, I'm so lonely. Yeah. Lonely. <laughs> my heart hurts too, baby. Lonely. <laughs> yeah, it's so lonely. And then he come back and screaming again. <laughs> Baby, just don't let me go. <laughs> yeah, and then you think don't about like. Don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> don't know what I'm gonna do because I know I'm coming to the end of the road. The end of the road. All right, shut up. <laughs> 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 but I'm, I'm, because you know what I'm picturing. I'm picturing them in the studio right. and like Babyface sitting there like. He's killing it. <laughs> yeah. This is a hit. This is a hit. Yeah. Wanye's in there like, ah, ah. Yeah. and it's just like that was that era where it was like you had to do all that theatrical stuff. Yeah, and it it when you're singing that, it was making me think of um, why am I? I'm not remembering the name of the movie, but you're gonna remember it right when I say nights like this. I wish. Yeah, five top. Five 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 there we go. Five tops. Five tops. <laughs> <laughs> it was four tops. That was, that was five four heart beats. Yeah. <laughs> so you, there's a part in it where they're like just doing stuff to make the girls like them. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And they're like the girls, they're screaming. Oh, yeah. And that became the thing, you yeah. know, especially for like. For the, us. The black artists, you know. Remember. Or, remember. Or the ur- I'll say urban because we're not, you know, we're yeah. mixed. Right, right. right. But that's like. But that. even not only because then you think about the whole NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, you know, that whole swath of uh, artists, 98 Degrees, you know, it was the same thing. Mm-hmm. But times a million because, right. you know, the young white girls <clears throat> would scream even louder, mm-hmm. you know. But I remember for us. <laughs> <laughs> would they? Would they? Yeah. yeah, this is facts, man. Like, <laughs> bro, have you ever have you ever <laughs> seen <laughs> have you ever seen white women react to Michael Jackson? Yeah, they pass out, fall out. Yeah. Like they literally. Wait, wait, they did that to Marvin Gaye too, bro. Nah, dude, not, it was on another level with Michael Jackson. Michael. Michael Jackson could just w- be floating by them in his captain <laughs> outfit and his his captain. Crunch, I never understood his captain that. crunch. <laughs> I, I never <laughs> understood that, dude. Like <laughs> they over there with, his, with his sunglasses, just looking like he's like with, like he's from the Moonwalker movie with with, with, with uh, rockets on his feet, just floating right, by. Right, right. And and they just passing out as he as he goes past them <laughs> like that. That is on another level, yeah, you know. Definitely was. But I think like it shaped. But that doesn't happen nowadays. No, it's sh- and I think a lot of it is in rebellion to a lot of this stuff. Right. Like think about it. People always complain about the content of music right now, but I think it's because a lot of dudes don't want to be soft like this. Mm-hmm. Like they they rebel against it. I'm pointing at the phone as if the song is on there right now. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm just I just mean uh, they don't want to be soft like people of were writing songs back then about that stuff like right. so there's a there's a fine line about like you can write about real love you can write about real experience and there is a lot of songs that are like that that people connect with but i think like for a long time it was just it it started to get so crazy about like all right what can we do to simp to women? You know what I mean? Like, how can we just be the biggest simps in the world? Because they're the ones buying the records. Simpin and that's when I remembered that Boys to Men had a song called Simpin. I don't know if it's, it is correlates. Is that the same? Like, did they I don't really know what Simpin that? meant. Let me, I'm going to see if I can... Uh, simpin? Did y'all know, y'all never 90s. seen it? Now, see, this was, this was like pre-end of the road. This was like right after... Yeah. Motown Philly, so they weren't as big at the time. So it's still gonna be like a Michael Bivens type production with the, you know, the yeah. Right. Um, Someone who is whipped. Is that kind of something you're talking about? Well, that's what it means now. But I didn't know. 
like what it meant back then. Oh. I knew I knew pimping ain't easy. I, I so when they came out with the song, I was thinking maybe they said simping because they don't they didn't want to be censored. So they they censored mm. the word themselves. That's what I was thinking when that song came out. And mm. I was granted I was probably like twelve. <laughs> but I've never, I've never heard they're saying simping ain't easy. Simping ain't look, I'm gonna bring it bring it up right now. Never heard that before. Yeah. I don't even think I heard the song. Yeah, I did. We had the it was on a soundtrack. Wasn't yeah, it? it was on um no, it was on the um the East Coast Family oh, that's um, compilation was. album. Yeah, we had uh, ABC, BBD, um uh and boys to men. He walked in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> John John front of your angle. He doesn't like but, how white he looks. So. <laughs> <laughs> to fix his life, it's barely going to be on him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John, John. Uh, there you go. Again. Hey, John. <laughs> Yo, Kyle, can you, um, can you unmute my uh, yeah, audio you. channel? Yep. Um, uh, Kyle likes to chat, so. <laughs> All right, pull, pull up my um. <laughs> Kyle I, likes to chat, and that means I'm gonna. Yeah, when it's him and Rachel over there, the he camera he never has it. to hit that three button. <laughs> <laughs> Shout yeah, out to Paul this... Paul Horner. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Okay, that's not good. It's gotta, coming through your laptop. Yeah, I gotta change that real quick. But you can already hear the production <laughs> value of that, right? That is definitely yeah. Hey, don't show all my settings, bro. Roger, right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Kyle, can you, um, the back of that interface, can you plug that USB, make sure it's plugged in all the way? Um, where is it? Oh, I don't think it was plugged in at all. Oh, that'll be the problem. Where's the USB? Right here. Probably got unplugged and somebody was over there with all them cables. Oh. oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Rut row. <coughs> Just, wrench around. What's, what's going on here, Jamie? Everything right now. Well, I, you know, I, I hooked all this stuff up. I mean, you guys come over here and just start messing it up. <laughs> Let me just grab stuff and put it here. What you, it here. What you drinking there? Sugar. Okay, so <laughs> while he's doing that, I, I think we can all kind of agree that like Jamie was saying, a lot of these songs had to do with just trying to get women to buy the songs, but also turning into like, how can we get women to let their guard down? Mm. Well, you know what I mean, I think how can we get? Oh, you mean like in order to, for to, for them to be vulnerable to sleep with? Yes. So, yeah, I think that sleep was, that's with the motivation for a lot of artists. Buy our what do they want to hear to so I can lay with them? Yeah. 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 And then, because you had that side, but then you had the, at the same time, you had like, this is the same era of gangster rap. Mm -hmm. So think about yeah. that. Like you got the hard, hard side, but then you got the, the soft. The simp side. The, the soft <laughs> side. And it was like, a lot of these guys who were acting like that were from the hood too. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know. I thought that, that was kind of interesting, like. And you see that dynamic, like what the heck happened to a lot of times in that women will, they want that hard dude, but at the same time, they want somebody who's going to tell them what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. right. 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 But so dudes are just going to tell them what they want to hear, you know, just so they can just get, to get them in bed. Yeah. And we're seeing that so much now, like guys still our age, still yeah. living that life. That's right. Yeah. You know? yeah. All right. Here we go. I think we I think we should. This should be good now. Just so we can see, because you guys didn't know. And look how simping is spelled. Is that how, how do they spell simp now. when you looked it up? S-I-M-P. S-I-M-P. So this is spelled so S-Y-M-P-I-N. So, again. Closer to that pimp. It's a mystery. <laughs> oh, so this was Black Men Can't Jump. Yeah. This was on that soundtrack. White Men Can't Jump. White Men Can't Jump. <laughs> 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 what the heck? <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> they got a new oh, in yeah. there. <laughs> we got to talk about that for those that don't know. Anyone who's a fan of 90s R&B music, that was, that was like the, what is something that, that they do in every song now? Uh, I don't know. What? What is something that like. It would have like, to be a sound, right? It's like now? a, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> like something uh, like that. Yeah, like yeah, you know yeah, they do that. Yeah. Every artist does yeah. that now, or yeah, or, yeah. 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 <laughs> like yeah. like something yeah. like that. Yeah. Every artist copies. In yeah. the '90s, if you were R&B artist, you had to have a name. You had to have that <laughs> in the song. And Boys to Men had it probably in like seventy percent of the records. Yo, so I looked up uh, "Simping Ain't Easy." Yeah, it says the act of begging or looking for sim- sympathy, normally from a member of the opposite sex. Right. Yeah. Uh, sympathy, that's, that's simping. Sim- yeah, sympathy. S-Y-M-P. Okay. But it's so it's, it's a game. So that's mm-hmm. what this song is about. But so simp now is something so we different. Now think about end of the road. Simping. Yeah. Right. Right. That's what. No, but that's end of the road is definitely what today's standard of simp simping is, is called. Yeah. Right. That's end of the road. And bended knee and but even water they're, runs dry. They're saying this is what <laughs> right. we're doing. We right. right. We're, we're trying to get sympathy. <laughs> right. 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 We don't even know. And if you think about it, like. Isn't that what the devil does? <laughs> <laughs> right, right? Yeah. Like, he tries to get you to sympathize with him, and then you let him in. Uh, let me play a little bit of the hook just so we can... <laughs> you got to love all the, like... The Michael Bivens loved those like weird horn sounds and like the like the, the yeah like yeah. the little crazy stuff that would always be in his production. <laughs> He's just like this sounds exciting, party, mm. yeah. But anyway, so so Boys and Men had a song called "Simpin' Ain't Easy" and all their music was about being simps. So it was <laughs> it was just interesting how that all plays together. Yeah, and. <laughs> <laughs> And women ate it up, and then it, it, when you think, boys and men, they were the number one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it started like this whole era of this, this style of R&B music. Right. Which, you know, know, you just played that Drew Hill song. They were, you know, spawned off of that whole movement. Uh, You know, 112. Mm-hmm. Um, Jagged, Edge. Well, you had Jagged like, Edge. I think Drew Hill was like that. It was supposed to be that middle ground between what Boys to Men was and what Jodeci was. Right. So like the very similar in sounds, but taking qualities of both. Yeah, I think so too. I think their their um, style was supposed to be a mesh of the two. Mm-hmm. Um, Cisco stole a lot of his riffs from KC. Right. And Jodeci <clears throat> didn't do a lot of that simp and stuff, did they? Um, not. It wasn't. It didn't play as that type of simping because they their songs are like tough guys yeah, yeah it was more just like like i said like sometimes the mu- the music can connect because it's about real thing like when you think about um baby won't you just stay for a little while freddie calling me won't you just stay like sorry i left you left you crying it wasn't like it didn't. You didn't get the vibe of like whining. Yes, you know what I mean. Even cry for you. It cry for you. It yeah. wasn't. But it's still, it wasn't whining. Cry for you. He's whining. Oh, yeah, he's, he's in vain. Yeah. But it didn't. It no, doesn't it feel, feel like, like end it, of the road. <laughs> end of the road is yeah. on another level. Yeah. yeah. Right. But but still, it's still like you're you're trying to say it just to win them over. I'm gonna right. go listen to Joe to see now. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I think what we get now, like I was saying, is like a lot of artists that don't want to be that. So everything is about, you know, I don't give a crap about these girls. I just want to sleep with them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The lyrics, lyrical content of most of the young R&B guys Which now. Which is nothing new in terms of like, because that was going on back then. Humanity? Just, mm-hmm. <laughs> they yeah. were just pretending. No, no, no. I mean, it was going on with the rap. Like. You know what I mean? Snoop Dogg got that. Yeah, time. yeah, like, yeah. You, you don't love them hoes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was that? Was that song? That what was that song? Um, Biggie at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hip hop. It was always that was more of the vibe because you couldn't, you couldn't be, you couldn't pull off hip hop and be a simp. You know what I mean? Unless yeah. you're like LL Cool J. Some for some reason he got a pass. Mm. Right. You know what I mean? I need love. When I'm alone in my room, sometimes I stare at the wall like, yeah. what? <laughs> hey. 
Kyle, yes, you did. don't he, say it. <laughs> what? Kyle's thinking about when he's what alone about in his say? room. <laughs> why, why is that my thing? Because I saw the look on your face. I, I wasn't even I thinking that. I thought you that. were thinking like, why is he staring at the wall? <laughs> I was thinking, it just sounds stupid. Yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> to me. And in the back of my mind, I hear my conscience call. <laughs> <laughs> Go out there and do something. <laughs> Go get a sandwich. I don't. I don't remember any of these lyrics. Jamie <laughs> remembers them all. You want to? You want to? Should I um, play Freddie's voicemail? <laughs> Are you sure? You want? You sure you want to do that? Uh, no. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm not going to. <laughs> you didn't click them off, did you? No. Oh, okay. I just muted it. Um, yeah, but I think. It definitely was an error where we were under it, you know, under that spell. Yeah. I think we got seduced into that mm-hmm. that way of thinking. Yeah. I mean, but it, it wasn't just in that era. No, you know? it, it was that yeah. was back in the fifties, sixties, yeah. you know, when yeah, you think but about it was a culmination. Like the culmination point of the music industry was the nineties. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, and Boys to Men was one of those catalysts. Like they just did that documentary on VH1, mm-hmm. and one of the episodes was about how Boys to Men changed the music industry, basically, by how huge they became as an urban artist. It was the first time that had ever happened. Mm-hmm. You know, basically meaning black. Mm-hmm. No other blacks had ever sold that many records, <laughs> <laughs> um, and crossed over to so many um, wait, wait. of the screaming white girls. Ma- Michael Jackson wasn't wasn't black. Well, when he was black, he didn't sell that many. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't until... The transition. <laughs> it wasn't until... He, oh, God. No, but I think, um, I think he... Didn't he... Didn't Boyz II Men outsell him? I don't know. No way. No, I think... We got to look that up, point, bro. Yeah. No way. I don't I think know. There's no point, way Boyz II Men outsold Michael I, Jackson. I mean, you got to think it's the, the 90s, two, though, right? So... Yeah. 90s was the height of the music industry. Yeah. Like, so... It's it's about time. It's relative, yeah. Like, yeah, it's relative because when you think about it, like nobody was selling diamond. Like yeah. that was the diamond era. Yep. You know what I mean? That, that just, had never happened before. Yeah, right. yeah. That wasn't even like even nobody like in the sixties, like if you did gold, you're amazing. Yeah. So platinum mm-hmm. didn't exist till the eighties. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like if you you were you were selling gold, you you were rich. Yeah. You know what I mean? I have to disagree with you on that platinum thing, though. Really? Because uh, just, you know, the the Temptations, uh, they got their first platinum record in 1971. Oh, really? Yes, Just My Imagination was their first platinum single. It went platinum in in 71? Mm -hmm. Or did it go platinum later? Just My Imagination was in the 70s? Yeah. It was, uh, wait, which question was asked? You know what? It was 1971 and went platinum, so. Each day through my window. Yeah, you could tell that was a 70s record just by the production. Yeah, I guess. It was like edging into that disco sound. Yeah. And even um even as they would perform later on in the 70s like like 5 years after that song came out they were then considered like an oldies act for some reason so they go through a medley of their greatest hits in like 5 minutes mm-hmm. and they would introduce Just My Imagination as remember when we got our first platinum record. Mm. So yeah. the first platinum album was in the 70s. Mm. 1971. Who was it? It says uh, Eagles. Oh, wow. The Eagles. So it was the 70s. Didn't when, know Platinum track when, back then. When, what, it was the 70s when Platinum first happened. Right, let me see. First Platinum album. But you can tell, like, it's yeah. as they as they were figuring out how to expand the music industry, how to grow it, how to make it more accessible to people, um, productivity, that's what spawned more records being able to be sold and into the eighties it just hmm. went crazy and then the nineties was triple platinum, quadruple right. platinum and then diamond, you know. Um which I think who was the first diamond album? Probably like In Sync or some Backstreet Boys. I was gonna say it had to be with Justin Timberlake. Yeah. But yeah, it was a different different time then. Yeah, Eagles greatest hits. Eagles greatest hits was the first that was a huge album. Platinum record. It says, uh, the first artist to manage this, this feat. Yeah, Eagles. Um, <clears throat> their greatest hits from 1971 to 1975. So, I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's B- true. Believe Google? No, I'm talking about what he said. Because 
just my imagination. They went platinum when? Look it up, Kyle. All right, let me see. Maybe, uh, uh yeah, I don't know. I was going to say. Well, 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 as to Just America. Yeah, shout out I to think, George. I think it's 1976 because it says between 1958 and 1976, the most prestigious certifi- certification award to a best selling album was the gold record. Maybe he's talking about single. That yeah. might be different. Uh, okay. But the uh, the but album, the right. album, album versus too. single. Yeah, because yeah. I was talking about albums. Um, yeah, so albums w- was 1976, Eagles. Greatest hits from seventy one to seventy. Paul said, "No way." He probably was talking about uh, Michael Jackson versus Boyz II Men. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't believe so it. Look up singles, I don't Kyle. believe it. I know. I know that that boy, I know that Boyz II Men two album was like yeah, it broke two, a bunch of yeah, records. Yeah, it did. You know, and that was the one. And I think what, he, I think I thought they caught Michael back because it was a big story. Like, yeah, oh, I remember really... it being like this iconic thing yeah. that they sold all these records that had. Um, I'll make love to you. Maybe he beat Bad, but no, because Bad outsold Thriller. Did it? Yeah, really. Pretty sure. Bad did not outsell Thriller. Yeah, dude. I think s- yeah, because Thriller. Yeah, because yeah, it had to. Let's look it up. Uh, by the way, the first platinum single to be uh, awarded was to Johnny Taylor with the song "Disco Lady." I don't know what year that came out. There wasn't much more information than that. Um, let me see. Johnny Taylor, Pla- uh, Disco Lady. Info I didn't know. <laughs> Who is Johnny Taylor? I don't know a lot of info. Let's not go down a rabbit hole. With <laughs> <laughs> we're, 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 we're missing the point. Right? <laughs> you know what? It's it? become a music <laughs> trivia show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That actually oh. did come out in 1976. So maybe you're right that Just Imagination actually got their platinum status later. Later. So so you don't know what you're talking about. So, Kyle, <laughs> you hey, are Jamie. no longer <laughs> in the uh, Motown. Uh, I was Michael Jackson's top selling song was Thriller. Top selling song? Yeah. Or album? Song. Thriller. We're talking about albums, talking though. About yeah, album. but you were saying Bad and Thriller. Well, Thriller was the, that. They were both Thriller, albums. Yeah, they were, they were both albums. They were songs, but. They were songs, but they were also the title, title songs cuts, of yeah. the album. So I was talking about the Thriller album versus the Bad album. Right. I mean, I might be thinking what it sold in the first week or whatever, but maybe maybe over time, yeah. Thrillers outsold Bad because Bad thriller. outsold Thriller in the album. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I thought. Okay. I remember seeing that before. It's always an eighty percent, eighty twenty percent when right. it's me versus Jamie <laughs> <laughs> with facts. But but you know what? It's not necessarily that it was better. It was just that the timing. Yeah. It's always about the yeah. timing. Well, think about it. Thriller was what made people like, made Michael Jackson a megastar. So, mm-hmm. of course, his next album is going to outsell that one because right, now right. everyone knows about right, it. You know right. what I mean? So, it's like. Yeah. But it, then after that, it was like. It was like. So, then the next one was what? Dangerous? I don't know. That was the gold face? Was that the one with the face? Dangerous was the one with the face with all the artwork around. The artwork, yeah. The monkey and the hand. All the weird stuff. Yeah, all the Teddy Riley Riley production. Remember the time. No, no. Wait, was that on? Remember the time. Was that on bad? That might have been on bad. What happened? What happened? Mm, Nothing. You can't hear yourself anymore? Something. Yeah, it was like. Something. Did you move something? Jiggly. No, my headphones didn't change. Oh, okay. It was jiggly. His headphones are fine. Okay. So I don't it's know what to do. Um, can you can you wiggle that that transmitter for me? Just wiggle it. Yeah, just uh, wiggle it. Wiggle, wiggle it, it. <laughs> just <laughs> a little bit. All right, that's better. <laughs> okay, now what it's is, now it's, it, now it's what totally gone. It's gone. <laughs> I don't know. No, uh, there you go. Okay, we're good. There you go. We're good. Stand like this for an hour. <laughs> no, no, we're good. Don't do it. Just let it go. But any anyway, no, what was the touch point it again. of what we were talking about here? I don't know. We went down a rabbit hole that Jake go. didn't want to go <laughs> down. Yeah. And then there was something else we were talking about right after that that we were like, let's talk about this on the podcast. Yeah, I don't know. You well, don't we're talking that? about classic music, right? And I just want to let you guys know that my life is now fulfilled because I have found the classic album that, <laughs> that I've wanted for years. Look at that one. Oh, uh, put it in focus. I want, I, I, I've been looking for this for uh, probably 10 years now. Put it yeah. to you gotta, your face. You got to put it to your close face. to your face. Oh, okay. We, oh, there we go. 
Look at how, yeah, that, look, there's five of us. And speaking of like the influence, like what is that? That's like uh, Drew Hill, yeah, yeah. 112. 112, all those album covers. That's what we were emulating, you know. They signed the back too. They signed it. <laughs> we signed all of them. Where'd you find we white sharpies at? <laughs> huh? Did you find white sharpies at? No, they oh, were silver, silver sharpies, yeah, dude. Silver sharpies. Get it right. Come on, man. Silver sparkly sharpies. Mm-hmm. Oh, the girls loved it. How bad you want it? <laughs> <laughs> How bad you want it? How ba- yeah, well, I've wanted this bad for a while. <laughs> and now I have it. Oh, man. Uh, I'll put it back. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Uh, yeah, so we, we got a, we, we, it was just funny because that's how easy it is to, you know, fall in love with things and never even like truly vet them or ever even truly like go deeper with thinking, what is it? What is this thing? You know what I mean? What am I listening? What am I, why am I attracted to this? You know what I mean? What are these lyrics saying? What are they speaking to me? You know what I mean? And it, it become like normal. Yeah. You know? It's so natural. <laughs> you belong to me. I belong to you. <laughs> it becomes that, that uh, it's natural for us to act in this way, so it becomes normal. And, but it's, it's just, it's crazy that Thanks, we came out of that era. That was the height of the music industry. Yeah. Right? They were throwing money around. Yes. Like, they were, like, the, the deals that people were getting and the the write-offs that, that they were making off of the the money they were spending on these artists, right? Yeah. And and the I, the bad deals that they were getting, I yeah. should say, because that, that was the era of like you're in debt, debt. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. How can you sell? How can you go platinum? Right. You know what I mean? And still be broke. And like still the, be broke. we all know the story of uh, what, what was it? Not only um. Most of baby faces. Mo- most of baby faces. Uh, TLC. Yeah. Remember when she got up? Uh, Left Eye got up yeah. on the uh, podium and was like, you know, they went. I think they went diamond. They're, that yeah, record, they that crazy, sexy, cool album mm-hmm. went diamond, and they yeah. were broke. Yeah, you yeah. know, Tony Braxton. Tony Braxton, Braxton another one. Yeah, that they were yeah. under Left Face Records. Who was just mm. on the Mass Singer? Was she Tony yeah. Braxton? Oh wow! John John chimes in with pop culture references. <laughs> I like it. She got voted off. She got voted off because they probably oh, well. wait. But how does the mass singer work? You I don't, don't get voted off. You if you get if people figure out who you are, you leave, right? No. So you get you get voted off. Like so, like everyone can vote. Like the people in the audience vote who's the best. Whoever gets the in. audience or the the, audience. the viewers. The audience. Okay, so not so, so you can't like call in and vote no. or text in and vote. No. It's just who's in the audience. So what the audience. what the the judges do? What are they, what's the judges are trying to guess who it is? So if they they there's like a new thing this season. How can you not guess, guess it, Tony can, Braxton's voice? Though? I know she has such a distinct. I guess her voice. Amber's like, how did you know? Like that just sounds like Tony Braxton. <laughs> yeah. <and> like, <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Bob Saget did it. He actually had a good singing voice. Bob Saget. Bob Saget. I, yeah. I called that one out too. It was probably Melody. His reference was to. How I Met Your Mother. He was like talking about it. Yeah, uh, so he was a narrator on that show. Yeah, he was Ted Mosby. Yeah, and then I remember uh, yeah, um, T Pain did it, and everyone's like, "Wow, he can actually sing <laughs> without auto tune." <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I was always curious about that because I thought like if the judges figured out who you are, that's how you get voted. So off. they get like they win a trophy at the end that they figure out the most people like who gotcha. calls out the most people. Okay, uh, but. Now there's like this thing where they can like press a button if they think they really know, and if they're correct, then they win like a bunch of points. I guess I don't know. It's not. It's stupid. So it's who? Like, what's the points for? So they can win for a trophy. The judges. Oh, okay. <laughs> trophy, trophy for the judges. <laughs> for the pride. There's nothing for the, the viewers. Pride of the pride of <laughs> Nothing for the viewers. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing <laughs> for the viewers. So come look at this monkey. <laughs> so Kyle, you got that in your hand, right? <laughs> yeah. What What are some of the names of the songs? Oh, that are on this there? is going to be good. All right, names of the songs. Track one. Let me in. Let me in. Intro. I'm sa- I'm assuming that's a very short track. <laughs> uh, actually, no, it's not. It's actually like seven minutes, right? Yeah. Oh, no, really? No, not that one. That one is like, I think like four minutes because it's literally just. That interlude of over if and over I again. Come knocking, yeah, there's okay. no, yeah. My, 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 I would always think that an intro or would be an interlude and it's a, like an abbreviated thing, like a, like an abridged, shorter version right. 
Okay, next track. How bad you want it? Uh, no, even it's that, a, yo, intro. Oh. Track two is for you. Influenced for by one twelve. Oh, with man. the Influence U is spelled with the letter oh, U. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me in was in, influenced by one twelve because they would always have those. Good. Yeah. Inter- we were just singing lack last night because yeah, 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 yeah. I played I played that that chord in the beginning. They reminded me of the I Surrender 112 oh, okay. interlude. Track three is Come Back to Me. So wait, so For You <laughs> was the single. Okay. Right. Which a lot of people still post on Instagram to this day, like, oh, I love this song. And oh, I they wow. like they'll like play it and, and send us a video of the song. Wow. Um that had talking in it. <laughs> so cringy oh my god I don't even remember that talking over the intro man really? yeah oh, wow. it, Come Back had talking didn't it I don't remember any of these songs what's Come Back Come Back to Me is track yeah, three Come Back, come to, back me. to Me um, oh, I don't know it's one of the ones Brian wrote yeah uh, Come Back go? to Me yes you don't remember that no I don't I don't that sounds like I just remember Come enough. Back to Me <laughs> that's all I remember <laughs> I remember mom Are you used to reading love it that right, song. bro? Yeah, he's right. He's right. I remember that song. Uh, I got to listen to this. Uh, track four is How Bad You Want It. That's the one, yeah. Every time you write the word you, it's just a letter U. Yeah. Okay. That was a thing back then. Right? Yeah. You know? yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Get with the times. Yeah, right. Uh, track five, Rendezvous. Maybe we can make plans for two. <laughs> Spend the night just me and you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little rendezvous. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. Oh my gosh. Yeah, bad stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what's uh what's uh All right. The next one. Six, the next one? six is come to me. Uh yeah, that's, that's the one that's, that's the, the one that made that us change our, our life. life, bro. <laughs> when that little girl was like, My favorite yeah. song. So, She's so, nine years old. Yeah, let's come back to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, track seven is Saving This Dance. Was that the one that the PlayStation... Was that on the PlayStation? Maybe. I'm saving. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I Pete, 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 yeah. Pete did yeah. that track. Yeah, it was. It probably was on the I PlayStation. Think so. yeah, I think so. When you yeah. started singing, I thought you were sampling Summer Breeze, and then it turned into something very different. <laughs> I've never heard these songs. Yeah, I, I and you never will. <laughs> uh, I'm make sure you do not leave with that. Uh, come on. Uh, number eight is Making Love. <laughs> that was another PlayStation one. Yeah. What does that making mean? Making Love? What is Making they Love? Had, like, this you don't remember Making Love? It had like, the, the wind on it. Yo. Uh, how does it go? Bro, I don't know. Oh, when the sun comes up, we'll, we'll be making love. Oh, that was a different one. When the sun goes down, we'll be making <laughs> yeah. love. Yes. As the world yeah. turns around, we'll be making love. So, so you're terrible. Anybody who's listening to us right now, you can tell what we were about. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Now, track number nine. It's been a long time. Now that one, we know what that is. That was yeah. from the EP. We redid. We did a remake of it for this album, written by Keith Huggins. Yep. Uh, track ten. Can we go? That was Can another PlayStation. So, go? for the PlayStation, what we're talking about is when we were like very young doing our thing, making our own music. We had no access to a lot of gear and equipment and, and all this stuff, but there was a, a game on PlayStation 2 called MTV Music Maker. That thing was awesome. And you could make beats on it. It was like one of the first like beat things, like kind of like a FL Studio vibes. Um, yeah. Back then it was called Fruit Loops, but this existed before that. But it was on PlayStation, and I remember buying it, and Pete bought it, and we would just like for hours just make beats on there. Yo, I it was to, like terrible stuff. I used but. to play with that when you would leave, you yeah. would like leave it logged in. I would yeah. just like go on there and be like messing with you. I'm like, I'm probably messing his beats up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. We had a lot of beats on that thing. Yeah. Uh, track 11, Can't Touch You. Can I Touch oh, You? Oh, Can I, I Touch you? you? I'm sorry. Can I? Well, that was one of our first songs that we yeah, wrote. Yeah, right? we redid it for the album, though. And that I look like a T. Can, uh, can I touch you? The first Can I Touch can You we did on I, on on um, I, my dad's and Sonic EPS 16. And then um, we recorded it on that little Roland 8-track digital recorder that we had. And remember that first CD that we made? It had that song. It had I Like, um, Just Let Go. I Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just Let Go. And... Um, 
I think that's them boys. <laughs> so yeah. that that's them yeah. boys. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Cringy. Yeah. Uh, track twelve. Uh, since that night. Since, since that, that night. D A T. Wow. That was the reggae joint. That was when we was dabbling in the reggae. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I don't remember any. I remember them, but I don't remember. Them. Well, remember the first version of Since That Night was again done on the EPS, but it was more like a Spanish kind of style. Right. And we had we had recorded that on the eight tracks. But when we did it, when we did it like in the studio, we did like a reggae version mm-hmm. of it. Uh, track thirteen, back to back. Oh gosh, back to back. back Belly that to was back. That Jake was, Evans. That was one of the favorites. <laughs> For some reason. <laughs> What's your favorite song? Back, back. Yeah. For some reason, people back, back. loved Back to Back. And and the thing, the, the funny thing about Back to Back was it was us remaking a song that my dad did in the mm-hmm. 80s where he did like this kind of like Latin funk kind of Gloria Stefan kind of vibe. Yeah. And um, it was like a Latin thing. And um, we did it, but did it like a reggae thing. And there's a rap on it. But it was like dancehall reggae, like Sean Paul style. And Pete rapped on it. Yeah. And it was very vulgar. (laughs) (laughs) Very vulgar. Yeah, Yeah, Madison used to love it, and she was like, I think she was like eight or nine. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I don't see explicit content label on this. Mm -hmm. Uh Yeah. (laughs) We might have. We might have bleeped. The the explicit concept. Oh, okay. And I don't think what he I don't think he said any curses. I think he just said vulgar things. Oh, like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Which should have been explicit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, was, that was too much to label. Yeah. The last track here is called "Live Your Dreams." Live your dreams. Wow. So that was a little. Better. That was a little. Yeah. But it's still. It was it was very surface level yeah, better very though. Surface. <laughs> very surface level. <laughs> Go yeah, live your dreams, dream, stand tall. <laughs> Don't quit even if, if you, you fall. fall. <laughs> life life, is, life hard. is hard. It's a struggle it's when a you struggle when, when you, you juggle, juggle who, who you, you are. really are. <laughs> so uh, my question is: So you have this CD here, and you were talking about the different ways you were making your songs. This was produced. Where and how? Like, was it on on a? Like- this was this was all produced like a mishmash of um, some some of, like I said, there was some stuff that we, um, we did on the PlayStation that we kind of took pieces of that, but then I I would redo the drums um, using samples on the on Logic and and this is like when we really started moving into production in logic and okay so this is a logic like produced right like how, that was how before now? He, that was before here right that was before no that was here that was here floor? yep that was when we first got into this building we when we first got into this building we started making that album mm-hmm. i is that because i remember i had graduated high school and it was 2000 and no 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 i was like like maybe in high school 2006 yeah and you guys were painting it then and this what came out in 2004 mm-hmm so 2006, we put out the Say It EP, which is way better than that one, but still kind of cringy. <laughs> right. Um, so you guys have been one here of my, for a while. One of my favorites. Uh, in all of them shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, Beautiful is a good song. Beautiful is a good song. Um, but yeah. What else did we have on that? That was, that was the last track. Oh, we had Let Me In on there Let again. Let Me In. The, the, new the song ver- version. Did a yeah. song version of Let Me In. Put oh. that on there. Um and then say it and then beautiful and then what was sunshine there was some sunshine. sunshine was and then, why you leave why it you leave <laughs> why you leave it tim marshall's that favorite was, song what which one is it sunshine. oh sunshine of oh, course yeah. it is uh, i love sunshine Sun, sunshine is a great man yeah, is. enchantment baby that last uh, when we was in atlanta i was just listening to all enchantment while we were in the airport i was yeah. like man i love that group yeah yeah, <laughs> such an underrated group, man. You know who Enchantment is? Uh, I've heard of them, and especially because of Tim Marshall, but I don't, um, I don't think I can recall any one of their songs. Yeah, well, yeah, they have some good songs. That was one of the like unsung groups from the seventies. They were like, mm. they they were probably like better than most of those groups. Can I ask you guys a question? So yeah. I was I was listening to Tim Marshall's show not incredibly long ago. And he played Sunshine on, on the air. This was probably like last year. Mm-hmm. And he 
He uh, he built it as vintage jeton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he lo- <laughs> he loves us like that. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, how how do you guys feel about uh, you know the folks who recognize you for one specific genre or type, and then you know refer to that all the time, or might label you as vintage jeton? Does that phase you guys at all? Do you or? Don't bother me. Yeah, it's a part of like growing. Like, yeah, we're, sh- we're showing you showed that that album there. I mean, it's just a, it's a it's the honest progression of people like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but we can't tell them. Don't like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's cool. Yeah, but we're not that anymore. Well, we're, we can't. You can't expect us to to want to be that again. Yeah. You know or, what I mean? Or to be where we were when we did Sunshine or any of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. There's this dude that always comments. I don't know why he always does it, but he always comments on our like YouTube clips and stuff. It's like, y'all need to do R and B again. You're wasting your talent. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like, okay, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's your opinion. Yeah. I like the pop collar, Jamie. That was nice. <laughs> the pop collar. The picture. Oh, on the back. Yeah, the pop collar with this orange jacket you're wearing. Yeah, orange leather. Actually, Jake. Jake's got a pop collar too. Yeah, we was popping collars back then, man. <laughs> you know about that? Pop I collars. had the no sleeves going on. Yeah, as usual. Yep. Some things never change. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got sleeves on today, bro. It's a, it's a Jatan shirt, too, right? Yeah. The, yeah. Like no, climax. Climax. It was a Climax, climax shirt. Shirts, yeah. Yeah. Out of context, that looks weird. <laughs> yeah, but that was interesting. Uh, hey. That well, stuff got us this building, man. Yeah, you it's, you know? it's very true. Got us a lot of things, you know. Um, we we still sold a lot of those CDs, you know, just out there. I'll buy this one. You'll buy it? No. Good. That'll be three hundred dollars. It's not for sale. Yeah. <laughs> five thousand. Five G's for that. Sell it on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, but we. I just want to say, like, doing them songs, though, we were trying to be something that we weren't, mm-hmm. you know, um, that we didn't, we didn't really know it. Uh, we weren't, we were irresponsible. We didn't really know it. Mm. <laughs> um, and then through it, once we start realizing, like, people who are listening to our music, you know, like we said, because a lot of our stuff was pretty sexual. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. over extreme. Yeah, and didn't and like th- saw nothing wrong with that. Let's, yeah, yeah, let's go back to um, come, come to, to me. me. Yeah, so the come, story come to me was like one of those, and that's the thing that really made me like just check myself, like mm-hmm. think. Yeah, when there was a we were at in Uni- Philly Uni- at Unity Day, Day. At Unity yeah. Day mm-hmm. outside in the summer, and a lady comes up to me and says, "My daughter loves y'all music, right?" Um, her favorite song is Come To Me. And I'm like, Come To Me? Like, that's, I'm thinking that in my head as she's telling me this. And then her Maybe daughter... Maybe she didn't come back to me and then... What if she misspoke no, the whole time? You know why? <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> the whole trajectory of our lives. Right. <laughs> no, come on. No. They Come started. Back To Me is one of our songs? Yeah, that's the... The uh, third song on the on the song on the thing. They started singing the song. Mm. Oh, okay. So, and yeah, then she, she started sing. like she, started she was gyrating. Oh. She was, Yo, and yeah. she was no like nine years old. You were no, there. Yeah, okay. I was there. N- no older than nine. Yeah. yeah, and that's younger than our kids. That hit yeah. my heart. Like, yeah, yeah. That was it. Like, God was just checking me in that moment. Like, yeah, like, what are you? Doing? What are you doing? The you same. See, do you see what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. and yeah, it was those little things. That I would see, and I'm like, what are, what are we doing? You know. Yeah. And then these new songs started coming out, mm-hmm. like, yeah, out of us. But yeah, you gotta, you don't know that you're doing this stuff. You you don't know how much you've been programmed, how much like going back to the boys and men stuff. Yeah, how much that influenced your life. Yeah, yeah. It influences you. We're listening to that. We're listening to also all the gangster rap, all yeah, the stuff. Yeah. That, that we're listening to, you know, and you start to live that lifestyle, that culture. Mm-hmm. And that's not even really who you are, yeah. you know. We that wasn't who we are, who we were. But is that who anybody is though? Like when yeah. you think not, about it, like I mean deep down inside, no. That's what I'm saying, like No, but even like I'm just saying like like even surface level like you know what I mean? It's like, yo, we're playing a role, yeah. you know. 
Right. And we know we're playing the role. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and then it starts to feel like it's real. Yeah. And then when we did the Love Changes Things album, that's when things were definitely like shifting. Mm-hmm. We had like. Right. Love Which Sh- was 2009. 2009, right? yeah. Yeah. Well, we had been working on that album since this one, though. Yeah. Well, because think about it. Find my way. Find my way was like after the EP for that we did. Cause, I, cause find my way came out when we were doing uh, the the tours. Yeah, the Latin tour. That's and what I'm saying. Yeah, so we had put out. Um, that was in 2005. It. Yeah, we had put out say it. We had put out yeah. say it, but we had we were working on go slow. We were working on find my way. We were mm-hmm. working on is it love. We were working on. Um, Break it down, like all these songs chemistry that was on there. chemistry. Chemistry mm-hmm. came in two thousand nine, though. I mean, we, that was one of the last songs we wrote for the album. Mm-hmm. But like, I remember "Go Slow," you know, "Find My Way," "Love Changes Things." All of these songs were coming. Yes. yes. Was that later? Yes. No. Yes was was around the same time as "Go Slow." Um, <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, Kyle likes that that's one. Kyle's favorite song. Yeah. It was my favorite one on the record. It's all right. It's all right. It was a good one, too. Oh, I love Change the breakdown of that. Change Your Mind. Forgot about Change Your Mind. That's a good one. Yeah. Love Changes Thing. Love yeah. Changes yeah. Thing is a good one. Yeah. So, you know, the shift was happening, but it was just, there was this <laughs> battle because not everyone wanted the shift. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's, we, like, we were, we were going through this. We're selling our CDs. We're starting to see things happen in our life as we're doing it, right. as we're going on this journey. Um, we already had a background in God when we were kids, mm-hmm. you know. Not not all of us, but Stan, you did. Yeah. Um, well, all of us, really. Well, well the ones age. that are here, I guess. No, but even Brian, like, in a way, I guess in a way. Our girl Deanna's watching. She says, "This sounds like a good combo. <laughs> I, need to, I need to watch it from the beginning." <laughs> Yeah, this she would you would definitely like this one because we're going <laughs> digging into our past about we miss you, D. Well, we met Deanna, Deanna, we met outside of the B2K uh concert at on 69th Street, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we were when we were uh selling our CDs out there, and she was with uh Frankie, remember uh, Frankie, yeah, and Erica too, right? We Erica, Erica wasn't was the with them, here, yeah. but we met them at the same place, but we she wasn't with them, but yeah, Frankie, Deanna. We were selling with so many people from selling our CDs. We made like great connections with people. Yeah. So it's like everything wasn't in vain. But what we were pushing yeah, was, at that time, yeah, was in vain. Mm. Yeah. Um, but it it brought us back. We started, even though we were doing that, the faith aspect of let's go out and sell these CDs mm. and see what's happened. Let's not treat people. Um, disrespectful let's treat everybody in a positive manner in a good way yeah. you know mm-hmm. we did we we ha- had some some values that we would hold as we went out there that were biblical values mm-hmm. and then we started to see fruit from that and that caused us to seek god more mm-hmm. you know yeah. as we were going through this process we, we were seeing things happen also, we were being convicted by mm-hmm. certain things, like I said earlier. So, so that was really cool. And it, and and I started to play the piano more and just write songs on my own because a lot of those songs I didn't have much in terms of writing. Right. The song, the earlier stuff, mm-hmm. um, until like "Find My Way." That was like I would you know help a little bit, but "Find My Way" was the one where it was like that was a deep song. Mm-hmm. You know, that came from. The deep in me it was, and I was writing these songs that I'm just sitting down at the piano and just letting this stuff flow out of me that I don't even know where it's coming mm-hmm. from, you know. And then, so now it's no longer surface. Now I'm not trying to be mm. an image. I'm not trying to be something that, and that's literally what Find My Way is about, right? Like, right. I'm not trying to be what they mm. want, what people want from me. I'm just putting it out there, you know. And when we're lost in ourselves. Yeah, like how can you to, tell which way you're going? Um, and then the stuff moment. started mm-hmm. to click, mm-hmm. right? Um, and <laughs> Deanna said it was Bow Wow. My bad. 
<laughs> she said, facts, y'all always had a light. Thank you. Oh. I think people did see that in us as well. That was probably why a lot of people bought the CD. Right. Because like, even just us talking to them, we would talk to people. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And a lot of it was to convince them to buy our CD. <laughs> but we would also talk to people like genuinely, you know? Yeah. Like we wanted to connect with the people that supported us. Right. Yeah, yeah definitely. That def- definitely helped me out. Like, you know, because I, I would like, I remember growing up, I was never the one to like just engage with, with people. Now, you know, I yeah. talk to anybody. Right. You can go in any hey. arena. Yeah, yeah I, it broke us all out of our shells. I, Jake probably more than anybody because I know mm. like growing up with Jake, like Jake was never the type to just talk to anybody. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, so I think like a lot of that. Broke, hand to hand. Yeah, like yeah. that that opened you up in a lot of ways to that. Right. Yeah, you were the more outgoing one. Yeah. I was reserved. Yeah, I just didn't. I was just like oblivious oh. to to being shy. Huh? <laughs> what, huh? what, Kyle? <laughs> just Jake said, uh, what? You said you, J- Jake said that Jamie was the more outgoing one, and he was more reserved. I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no one could have told me that. <laughs> you, you, you jest. <laughs> no way. Some people don't know that, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I even stand. I like a lot of what we were doing. Broke you out of uh, you know being <laughs> shots. Oh, yeah. I remember. It. No, but at, <laughs> remember at the York Fair <laughs> after we after, we, after we got after busted. we got busted <laughs> and we went to the York Fair. That was at the B two K concert, yeah. and Stan was like so scared of getting arrested again because <laughs> he had already gotten yeah, arrested. Right. Bro, I gotta tell the story, Stan. <laughs> so we get arrested in Times Square, right? It was me and Jake on one side, and, you know, the other guys were on the other side. <laughs> Jake sees the undercover, you know, and he takes off his shirt, so he's, he's like, he's out of it. But Dude, you're not <laughs> telling the story. No, no, no. No, I'm trying to, I'm trying oh, to say trying I'm to trying to tell it. it. Fast. I'm trying to tell it fast. I know, but you're not setting it up <laughs> yeah, at all. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like Jake was there, and <laughs> <laughs> like I just want to get to the part. Me and Stan got it. All right. Well, real quick. So we're we were standing underneath. That was when MTV was the thing, yeah, right? Yeah. So we were right no, underneath. No, 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 no. It was a uh, uh, T R T R L P. Okay. Uh, P Diddy was yeah, was but that's there. on MTV. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. TRL MTV, <laughs> yeah. right? It was on TRL right. MTV, and we're right underneath that building, so we're talking to people, um, trying to get them to sell our CDs. It's literally the week, the we got our CDs that Saturday, right? Um, no, the, no. Well, no. that week it was that same week that we week. got yeah, because okay, we, got South our, Street we did was sisters first. on Friday. We did sisters Saturday. on Friday. Um, Saturday. Before we got the CDs, then Saturday we did the Up and Smoke tour at the Tweeter at the time. That was the first thing we did when we actually had physical CDs. Sunday then, we went to Sunday we went to South Street. <laughs> went to the Green. To the we Green, got, South Green, Street. Street. Green we got, got arrested. Got arrested. <laughs> and then that next week. That next weekend. Weekend. No, we went. Monday we went. Monday. Monday. Because TRL Monday. was right. on. To TRL. TRL was on Mondays, oh, right? No, was it Monday? It couldn't have it been was, Monday because he would spent a couple of days in jail, so it had to be like Tuesday or something. No, no, I that didn't was before spend that. A couple of days in that, jail. Yeah, we got we got out Sunday right away really at the before. Greek. Yeah, yeah, but it was a Monday. I, I thought it was still a weekend. I'm oh, tell- you're talking about yes. You, there wasn't until New Greek. York you spent. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Greek we got out the same day. Yeah. <laughs> Greek. Sun- like that was night. Sunday. Yeah, that was right. Sunday. The next the day, next day we went to we New York. We were right? going to New York. That's right. right. You're right. You're right. So we went to New York. TRL. Um, Times Square building. Every you guys, the everybody else right was now. on one side. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were on the other side of the street. Me, Simone, and Stan were on one side. So they went. And they were hitting, they hit up some girls. So as they were hitting up some girls, I went and I hit up some girls. I'm selling them the CD. I just sold them the CD. So literally, I give them the CD, right? I'm just thinking, like, why were we selling the girls? (laughs) (laughs) Symphony. (laughs) So as I'm literally, yo, I'm handing them the CD. And then I hear a guy say, put your hands behind your back. Yeah. So I'm thinking he's talking to me. Right. So I look over my shoulder, but he's actually talking to you guys. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. So that's where 
Yeah. All right, pick it back up. All right, I was just up. trying to tell that same yeah. thing fast. Yeah. <laughs> so me and Stan get get arrested, right? We end up in the same cell. Yes. <laughs> Stan, Stan is in his bag. He's yeah. like, because mind you, this is <laughs> this, this is like the, we just got arrested in South Street. Yeah. Next day, we're getting arrested again, and now you in now you <laughs> in the cell. Keep right. in mind that I grew up in church. Yeah, grew up just and you are, you, are, are, you are already going to have to hear it from your parents. <laughs> All this is like, because like, they like the devil didn't got you, boy. What you? I don't know what you're doing, boy. You're out there running around with the you're devil, drinking the devil's you're juice, drinking the devil's juice. <laughs> you're out there running around Stan, with this hippity hop. Stan was serious as heck, yo. I I was like, which wasn't necessarily untrue. <laughs> no, 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 no. He was like, he was like, I don't know if I can do this yeah. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but he did it. He did it. He, he did it. There. We literally, like, the next week, we went to a B2K thing. at In, in York, PA. Yeah. At the York Our Fair. Man, our manager got us in. Yeah. Told them we were, told them we were, with, we were MTV. with MTV Street Team. We need to get in right away. We got a lot of promotion to do. Can't wait. So they, they, and they just, were like, okay. Go ahead. Let him in. Go, go. <laughs> <laughs> and Stan was still scared <laughs> to sell CDs. He was because like, the security was standing right there. Yeah, there right. was a couple of police officers. Yeah, Remember, yeah, he yeah. used to hold. So he was holding them. See, like people would give us money. So we decided since we were getting arrested, we were we, we were trying to get smarter. Because the, yeah. the thing we were doing that was getting us in trouble is we're all wearing matching t-shirts, matching t-shirts, we're wearing book, book bags, matching book bags, Nike like, book bags. It was cool at first because we looked super like like a team, yeah. but it just made us stand out. So so it was obvious. Get so we st- yeah. <laughs> They're bootleggers. Right, exactly. <laughs> so we started realizing, all right, let's not do that, and let's keep yeah. the CDs and the money separate. separate yeah. So if they do approach us, there's no, nothing they can get on us. So we gave all the CDs to Stan, and we were collecting the money. So <laughs> it was like, all right, give me the money, and then go to that guy and get the CD. <laughs> so, so then, and when they would approach Stan, Stan was hold, holding them things behind his back. <laughs> like, 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 go, go, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Go, 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 go. <laughs> it was, but it looked so odd. It was, it was so funny because we would sell them the CD, yeah. and here comes Stan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're looking at him like. I was going to say, they, y'all told me that. They were looking like, <laughs> yeah. What is this, this guy's problem? <laughs> that was so hilarious. Yeah. What's funny oh, about all funny. that is um, when you guys, we, there was this like parade going on in Philly, and I knew about you guys getting arrested, so I was terrified, and you brought me with you. <laughs> I, had, yeah, yeah. I had to carry a bag full of like all the CDs in it. Yeah. And then you, the uh, you guys had my iPod or something re-up like that, bag. and you were using it to play the music. Yeah. Him, and then. Uh, you guys, one of you guys was staying with me, and they would just bring out the CD and hand it to them. But I was just standing there with the backpack. Yeah, you guys leave me by myself. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I'm that, like was, scared. I'm that was that like, was the new move. Arrested. So back in that back in the, the, these times, this was 2003 when we were doing this. Uh, when all of this went down. Mm. How does he remember years like that, bro? <laughs> I just remember. That's when that's, we came out with the CD. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> this was 2003. <laughs> this was 2003. So the reason why... I'm sorry. Because, dude, how do you not know Art the year we would... I still don't even remember his mom's birthday, bro. I don't, bro. Like, like, it was just funny because he's like, this dude remembers years like that. <laughs> that was the easy one. That was the that easy, easy one. one. <laughs> but <laughs> the reason why I mentioned the year is because the type of clothes that were in style at that time oh, really baggy, really baggy, baggy, baggy with baggy. giant pockets right. and multiple pockets. Right. So we Yo, would, we took so a, many CDs, we took pack advantage pack of that jeans. attire by packing those pockets with CDs. So we figured out that like it, we would leave the bag with one in one location yeah it usually with a person like john john or but if we didn't have a person we would just sit it off to the side mm-hmm. yeah and then we knew like it was 30 cds we, in the sleeve 30 yeah. cds in the seat yep. yeah. sleeve we knew that we could probably fit like 10, 10 cds on, on our person yeah. On our, yeah. yeah yeah so each person would have 10 cds on them and then after you sold those 10 you would go grab 10 right. more so if stan was there with six of us yeah right. so we knew we got th- we got two packs yeah right two packs of cds uh, which had 30 a piece right wow yeah, we had it down to a science. It's and then, too bad uh, you guys weren't in the crack game. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Dang. It's not too bad. It's not too bad, yeah. guys. <laughs> what are you talking about? We would we be were really poisoning our, time. We were poisoning the community with, with sex music, not drugs. Okay? <laughs> Get it right. 
<laughs> Sex news. <laughs> How bad do you want it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How bad do you want it? But, but we didn't mean it that way. No, no. no. Yes, um, yes. Uh, in the song, we meant it that way. But not that wasn't supposed to be the theme of the album. Yeah. Um, but what I, what, I, what was I going to say? Oh, so yeah, with selling the CDs, we uh, we we got smart and realized that malls were better, mm. just for the simple fact that like they would kick you out but they wouldn't arrest you. Yeah. So like you, you could and then you you just could, come back. You just come back. Cause they're not going to, they're just going to kick you out. Unless like the you're Jake and at the gallery. Oh, the gallery is a different story. <laughs> the gallery didn't play. Did I get arrested at the gallery? No, no you not guys arrested, arrested. But you guys just they, got, they, got they took our picture. Yeah, yeah. You and him and Moon, yeah, both yeah, their yeah. picture was up on the wall yeah. in the security <laughs> office. Like, don't let these guys come back <laughs> here ever. Wasn't yeah. there one black dude that would always, that was Cherry Hill. Cherry Hill. That was the dude oh, that Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah, Sergeant, Sergeant Slaughter. Slaughter. Yeah. And one of the reasons why was because he had a crush on Liz. I never told y'all this. Oh, you told me. Really? Yeah, he had a crush on Liz, and he knew he found out that me and her were together. <laughs> so he uh, made it. A he point hated to... us. <laughs> he was the only one in that because what in Cherry Hill? Cherry Hill Mall became like our home base. First right. of all, it's not far from here. Second of all, it's like we we were there so much that we became cool with the security. So they stopped kicking us out. They were just right. like, ah, they're not yeah, bothering us. Except nobody. when he was there. He was the only one. It was funny. He would always we were on the we would always be on the bottom floor. So he would look at us from the top floor yeah. with his hat on. Yeah. You know, he had like the, he, he the, the ranger hat. hat. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like doo -doo -doo. Yeah. he was like standing over us. And then like, we would just kind of slowly back away. Like <laughs> Yeah. But it was it it was interesting, man. Like we became fixtures at that mall. People knew we were going to be there at a certain point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was. It. And and yeah, they were like, "Oh, we're supposed to kick kick you guys out, but we love you guys." Yeah. yeah. And then that bunch of them ended up buying our CD, you know, yeah. becoming fans, and then they they would be happy to see us at that point. Um, yeah, I used to love going to that mall. Jake would always take me to get smoothies. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. And that was like. That that was a testament. That's something we learned from doing that was that even if people tell you no and even if people want to kick you out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like right. if you just keep showing them love and like are just genuine. Because we were never rude. That's the thing. Yeah. If, if we if we met them with the energy they gave, yeah. Yeah. like they would be like, Y'all can't do that here. We'd be like, yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, we didn't yeah, know. They'd be ready to like <laughs> yeah. snap on us right. and we'll, we'll just come back the next day. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we'll be like, Okay, no problem. Sorry. And, yeah. And they you didn't working know, tomorrow? Yeah, right. No? Okay. They didn't know how to react. What's, what's what was the frequency of like you returning after being kicked out? Every day. So you would be kicked out one day and just come back the next. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and and, but we would, we would, we wouldn't come back the same people. It would be like Moan and Jake got kicked out, and then me and Pete would go the next day. Oh, so there were teams. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We never all went to the same place because yeah. it was too. We would always go to Cherry Hill Mall, but right. somebody somebody, somebody would, else would go somewhere else. We had to divide and conquer because you, you can't concentrate all in one place. There's too many people in 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 the area, you know. Right. So we, we well, a lot of times we would. It was the gallery was the main spot, and then Cherry Hill. But the gallery, man, they they it was too hard. Like they they were, you would we would have got arrested there. Yeah. So we had to stop going to the gallery. So it was like Cherry Hill, Echelon was was dying Echelon, at that time. Yeah, so we really didn't yeah. go there. So we, would we did a lot of Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah, yeah. Deffert was hard because the security there was yeah, yeah. very. It wasn't happening. Yeah, but so we we did a lot of Cherry Hill mainly, and we would go to like. Um, Sheltonham Mall. We would go to. We were in Baltimore a lot. We would go to Baltimore on the weekends. White Marsh, yo. We would go, to, go to the football <laughs> games. Mills. Yeah. Because I remember going to Overbrook or something like that. Yeah, we would go to football like games. Cold as heck. Neshaminy <laughs> <laughs> Mall. Yeah. Quaker Bridge Mall. Quaker Bridge. Uh, yeah. uh, what's the one in, in uh, North we Jersey? We were in Franklin, Franklin Mills. We went, we went to Christiana. Um, yeah, Franklin Mills was Dover. another one. Yeah, right. Franklin Mills, we went there a lot. Franklin Mills used to do good. Yeah. Used to do good there. Until you got kicked out. But yeah. Then it was like... Yeah. We literally... We, we used to know which malls, like what times to go to which malls. It was, yeah. It was a science, man. We used to... Because that... I mean, based, that was how we paid for everything. That's, that's how we made our money. Yeah. yeah. That's how we paid for this, <clears throat> you know? Yeah. Can you recall, on average, how many units you sold 
at each mall uh, distribution day? Man, it it, it, it varied, varied so yeah, it much. Varied. It varied like, so you much. could have you could have a day where you sell like almost two hundred. Yeah, and yeah. then you'll have a day where you sell ten. Right. <laughs> you know. So yeah. Just but even varied. just those two hundred <laughs> days though. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. To and me. You, you're talking about two hundred dollars, ten dollars a CD. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, how, so and, and I'm, I'm assuming that most of these people, or at least a good amount of them, weren't aware before you started talking to them. No. So, what was their, what was their buy-in to actually like? What? How did you persuade them? Were they just you're, <laughs> we, you're just great conversationalists. <laughs> this, this, is, this is what we would do. <laughs> there would be a section in the song. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie's high note on Let Me In. On Let Me In. Yeah, we would cue that up and have that ready to go. Have that ready to go, And then baby. a couple, and then if they wanted to hear something else, you knew the time stamp on which song you were going to go to. Yeah. And yeah. show them something else. Okay. You know? We had like a few different songs we would go to. <laughs> yeah. Like, and you could gauge, like, like sometimes Let Me In wouldn't always work. Yeah. Sometimes so you could tell if someone, you look at that's their not face, their thing. Like, they're like, they're like they be like, so oh, then oh you that's know, cool. Or you switch to something switch else that's got more groove to they're it or like, something. They're like, oh, oh yeah, I like yeah. that. It was just, you had to feel people out, yeah. you know, yeah. and wow. see what we their kinda vibe knew. was. Yeah. And you had to get by the initial stop because, you know, everybody's always, no, no, no. It's yeah. just my music. Yeah, it's just yeah. my music. Let me show you my music. Oh, right. it's your music. Oh. Right. The first, wow. the first thing was people getting them no. to stop. Mm-hmm. And you have to just ignore them saying no. Like, literally ignore it. Like, they, we would just, they would be like, no, I don't have time. And we would put the headphones on and just ignore it. And just start With playing the music. Going like, yeah, so just start playing. Oh, and yeah. then, and it was like, it was like, we knew there was like a, a, a psychological thing to it. Like, if you hand them the flyer and put the headphones on immediately, they, they, could, they were stuck. Like, they, yeah. couldn't, they couldn't walk away. And they were like, oh, and then they're reading it, but listening at the same time. And they're like, what is this? Oh, SRM. Music. Oh, okay. Oh, it sounds you good. can't do that in COVID world. Right? <laughs> you can't do that in COVID. And then we would, and then it, and then it became this dance about convincing them to part with their money. Like for there would be, there was many many people, and you know God bless them. Many people that were just like, yo, let me get it. I'm gonna support y'all. Mm-hmm. Boom. How much? You know. And then there was people that would be like, give me five. You know. There were people <laughs> be like, I'm gonna give them out. But then there was those people that would be like. Why would I? I no, I'm not buying this. Ten dollars. Why would I buy your CD? Ten dollars. Like y'all should be selling it for for three dollars. Ten dollars. I don't know y'all. And we then we would have to start to dance because we like all of that. It, we're, we're, it's bouncing off. Like you didn't even hear it, and it's just like no. But you got to support local people <laughs> because local people are the ones that build the. You know, like we would go into the whole thing. I mean, we used to. Have, I remember making people take back clothes they just <laughs> yeah. bought, return their clothes to buy our Multiple CD. Multiple times. I remember making people, we would follow people to the ATM, like, not not like stalk really? them. Not stalk them. I'm saying wow. like, like we would say like, yo, we can go, there's an ATM right there. We can go get, because they would be like, I don't have no cash. The ATM's right there. Let's get it. Let's get it right now. Would you park yourselves near an ATM? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> it would be James within. said he's cracking up. <laughs> <laughs> it would be within uh, within eyesight range. We could. Um, but it, Deanna says we asked him to sing and we would buy the album. Yeah, nice. we, we used to do that too. I, but we would only do that if all of us were in the same place. We yeah. would never, ever, ever sing without the whole group there. Right. Yeah. Because we didn't ever wanted to make it about like one person. One person. Right. You know. Yeah. So they they caught us at at a show where we were all in the same place. We were at outside of the uh, Bow Wow concert. So in those situations, we would sing, and then, and a lot of times that would help us sell because people would gather around, they'd listen, and then they'll they'll be like, "Oh, let me buy it," you know. Yeah. But for the most part, it was like a lot of talking and convincing, especially young girls who don't have a lot of money. Right. And they like you know you you talking to a seventeen year old girl who just bought a shirt for school. And you're like, you don't really need that shirt, though. Like, <laughs> you got plenty of shirts. How much clothes do you have? Do you really think of what is going to be more important? You connected to something that is from your hometown that you supported. That's going to go much further than that shirt that I'm you're gonna buying. I'm going to buy it right now. <laughs> like, you just convinced me. <laughs> and, we, you know, we would get those people to buy it. I'm so, so glad I didn't go to malls. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, we would, like, we I don't have, like malls. We wouldn't have sold to you. We only sold to girls, men, and women. Because oh, okay. men men was a harder sell. Men, I mean, unless no, they we came got up we, to us. Like, we would sell we, to we men if they approached us. Right. We never stopped men. No. 
And ex- sometimes, unless older, they were older, 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 older men, men. Always, older men with their wives. Yes, or, yes, yeah. yes. But you, you could never stop like young dudes or like, mm-hmm. you know, it's just it, there's too much ego to get past to even try to get them to buy your CD. Like there was definitely dudes that would come up like, oh y'all, y'all selling music? Let me get one, and they would they would support, and that was always appreciated. But it was it was more about you know the dance that we would have to do. <laughs> But yeah, like I remember we the reason why we started going to Arundel Mills every weekend, which is in Baltimore and Glen Burnie. I mean in uh Maryland and Glen Burnie outside of Baltimore, is because like one weekend we dropped like three hundred CDs in a day in that mall. Yeah. So then it became worth it to drive it was two a solid, hours. It was a solid one hundred at least. Yeah. We would we, 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 we would there. definitely at least drop a hundred in that mall. Because it yeah. was Arundel Mills is like Franklin Mills on steroids. It's a huge mall, and it'd be thousands of people in there. So it was like easy to spend, you know, five hours in there and sell three hundred CDs. So we would do that every weekend, pretty much, and barely any security. Yeah, they never really bothered us. That was the other thing. Yeah, like we, you think about like all the CDs we sold in malls and. Probably close to like what two hundred thousand, definitely over two hundred thousand. Yeah, we were buying them ten thousand at a time, you know. And that's just hand to hand. Yeah, you know, selling. Them. Yeah, we were in not one store. Yeah, <laughs> ever crazy. You know? Two hundred thousand CDs. Two hundred thousand yeah. CDs, bro. Yeah. We didn't sign at ten dollars a pop. At well, the well yeah, the the EPs was... we sold for seven. So how bad you want it? Were ten, but the yeah. the it's been a long time, and the say EP were all seven. Yeah. And then if you count what we were selling on the tours, remember when we were on tour? Yeah. So we would, we we would, would do, when we did the, the Pantene Total U Tour and the, the Ebony Black Family Reunion Tour, we would get off stage and then sell hundreds of CDs to the audience because yeah. there's, there's yeah, 10,000 people in the audience. So it was like we, meet- just, we just got done performing and opening the show and the crowd would love it. So now while the other people are on stage, we would just rush the audience. But we wouldn't <laughs> like... We wouldn't take, we would invest most, <laughs> like the yeah, majority yeah, of the yeah. money. So, like, we would just invest it back into what we were doing. Yeah. Um, because it's like, are we going to take this and spend it and, you know, and Paul, it's gone, or are we going to invest it back into what exactly. we're doing? Exactly. So Paul said, y'all were some hustlers. <laughs> yeah. Yo, it was a, it was a it grind. Was a, yeah. It, it was, was a grind. grind. Because, like you said, them days when you sold... Five CDs, like, yo, what y'all doing on uh, Cherry Hill? Man, we only sold two. What y'all doing uh, <laughs> the Chamonix? Bro, nobody was there. We yeah. sold one. It's like, damn. Yeah. yeah. Well, guess we ain't eating today. <laughs> like, yeah. like, yo, can we get, can we all split one crown fry wing? Like, yo, like, there was those, we had those days, man. Yeah. Because it was like, even when we were selling all those CDs, like Jake said, we were putting half the money from every CD back into buying more CDs, Getting equipment flyers. right away, flyers, yeah, yeah. like right then, away, off top. And then even what we got ourselves, we would put yeah. back a lot of times. Mm-hmm. So. How much were? Uh, how much did CDs cost to make back then? Um, we were getting them for like a dollar thirty per CD. Yeah, and at a thousand at a time, ten thousand, ten thousand, ten thousand at a time. Yeah. So you know, you think about that. You got to have the money put back in to be able to keep ordering you know right so right like around like 15 grand for each order yeah around that yep that's great because i was i was kind of figure out the numbers from what jake just said about what at a seven dollar for just if you just had everything at seven for two hundred thousand, that's almost a million and a half (laughs) in sales and then you got to put that back into you know right repurchasing everything right i'm just wondering and then you know Paying rent and yeah, here and gas and gas vehicles, and yeah, yeah, everything like we, you know, it's it sounds like a lot when you just talk numbers, numbers like that, in. but yes. you know, it ain't a lot. We were building something, you know, and that money. It's a great way to do it. Yeah, I mean, it was it was working. That was working like a charm until Steve Jobs destroyed us. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. remember I remember when the iPod came out, man. I saw it like, oh, this is going to hurt us, man. This you is guys stocked mine with, like, because I got the one of the highest ones. Yeah. It was like the terabyte or whatever. And you guys loaded that thing with yeah. songs. And 
I remember I found music I've never even heard of before, like Tower of Power. I love Tower of Power yeah. now because of it. Yeah. You had all these like different artists on it. Yeah, we didn't do consignment deals like with Sam Goody and Tower Records and all of that until all that like, stuff was on its way was, out. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. later. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, the, and the deals were so whack. It's like, we'll just go sit yeah. and sell them ourselves. Yeah. We yeah. put five in there and uh, right. yeah, we sold But we got to give them 30% yeah. of the money. Like, yeah. 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 yeah we, that was like the very beginning. Yeah. And it was like, they was like, just get all the CDs. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just go there and get all go them CDs. Yeah. 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 We sell them ourselves. Yeah. But. Yeah. We learned a lot. Um, some stuff <laughs> that wasn't so good, you know, that we were learning and. But but other things that, you know, like anything, there's stuff you you take from it and and uh, you hold on to. Um, but but the biggest thing for for us, I think, is like stepping out of our comfort zone, mm. moving in faith, you know, and then and then connecting that to God and how He works. And yeah, because we didn't like we all got saved not because we were doing bad, you know, yeah. you know, because we were like, Rock out yeah. and, you know, yeah. or, or like we had some amazing moment where, yeah. no, it was, it was because of the, what we were doing. We started to see things happening mm-hmm. and we're like, this gotta be God, mm-hmm. you know, as we're doing this stuff. Um, not to mention, shout out to my mom. Like my mom was praying for us and whoever else was praying for us. I know yeah. Stan's family was probably <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lord in a, help in this a religious boy. way. Yeah. Lord is boy. <laughs> but um <laughs> right. but, but it but uh, yeah, it was, it was those things and, and recognizing that, you know, and then tapping into the spirit, um in doing the music, uh mm. and you know, I I think I was like the first one that really started seeking, and then mm-hmm. I know I would like everything. I started reading the Bible, and I'm reading the Bible, and things that I never saw before started to open up to me that I I never saw before. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. and then telling every just every telling day. you guys about it, yeah. I think it made you guys like want to seek for yourself. Yeah, you know, yeah. and we started just to just grow together yeah. in God. And, Definitely. Because all yeah. of that stuff started to illuminate. I, it was something in Revelations that you talked about back then, and it was like, it hit me. Because at that time, I was still going out, parking lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you were you were still kind of hanging on to the, the party life, yeah. going to clubs, yeah. bars, and stuff like mm. that. And we talked about Revelations or yeah. something that night, and it was like, damn, yeah, what am I doing? Dude, I remember when like it, I really started go, trying to go deep again was... One of the long trips we were on, Dave happened to get the Da Vinci Code, I was going, yeah. the, mm. the audio book on yeah. CD, yeah. and we were list, we listened to that whole book on one of the trips. I think we were driving to Texas or something, and I remember just like hearing about all these different books that I never heard of before. <laughs> And my curiosity just spiked because a lot of the things that I, questions that I always had about like things I was reading in the Bible, it's like, yo, I want to see. So I, I remember getting, going on this before YouTube existed, before, you know, I'm going on Google, look, trying to find the book of Enoch and like found like a manuscript of it and printed it out and yeah. I'm like reading it. <laughs> and it was just like crazy. Like mm. started reading all these other like extra biblical texts and stuff like that. And then it started like connecting other things and making other things make more sense. And I started reading the Bible more and then you were, you know, talking about all the stuff that you were seeing. And then mm. it was just like, wow, things started to connect a lot more, mm. you know, but I remember just like that, Listening to that, and, that, and you know, of course, that's coming from the angle of totally, you know, trying to destroy the Bible and yeah, destroy yeah, Christianity, discredit, yeah. discredit Christianity and make it seem like a cult, you know, but that's not what it did for me. Right. You know. It caused you to look into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, yeah. And I remember when you printed out um, the Book of Enoch, okay, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and I started, and you left it like yeah. on the counter or whatever, I was reading it. Like, it was blowing my mind, yeah. you know, like all these things, all these connections that mm-hmm. I never knew, mm-hmm. you know. So, yeah, it was cool. But it was so out there. I was like, all right. Yeah. I just read like, I think like the first chapter. Yeah. You know, and I left it and I read it later on in mm-hmm. my life. But, but yeah, it was pretty crazy. 
a lot of powerful stuff in there. Yeah. And I remember even before, like now, of course, we know about Genesis 6 and we know about like the connection that everybody makes there. And, you know, but I remember making that connection myself, Mm -hmm. reading it and being like, oh, this sounds like, you know, the little thing that was glazed over in Genesis that Mm -hmm. we never learned anything about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This sounds like that. Because it's not in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just, it was just, it, it opened up a new passion for me. Mm. You know what I mean? And then we started, you know, looking at, we started going down rabbit holes with the. And you started the, paying the conspiracy. The, oh, man. <laughs> Dude, I remember watching um, uh, Loose Change around the same time. Yeah, yeah. And then um, <clears throat> all those uh, videos we were watching about the founding of America and like the the occult stuff that they were into and Aleister Crowley and finding out all this stuff like yo I never knew any of this mm-hmm. like this is deep and uh yeah it just changed it changed the way you see things and what's important you know yeah yeah, yeah. And you keep growing Oh, that was a fun trip it's, down uh, memory yeah, lane. All about Jatan. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, I mean, I got a couple things I want to show you guys okay. before we get out of here. Real quick, we won't stay long. Oh, um, yeah, I saw this. Did you watch this? Dude uh, is Not back back in the news again. Athletic. Our boy from uh, The Magic. What's his name? I don't even remember. I don't watch basketball like that. Oh, okay. Well, let's watch <laughs> this. Because this is like... He, it's going viral because he they questioned him about why he doesn't want to take the uh, jibber jabber. <laughs> and uh, I like that jibber jabber. <laughs> and uh, his answer just kind of like shut everyone up. Mm. So, Jonathan Josh Robbins with the Athletic. Uh, what is it about the vaccine that that makes you uh, hesitant to 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 get it? Uh, I, I would start with um, I've, I've had COVID. Um, in the past, and so our, our understanding of antibodies, of natural immunity, has uh, uh, changed a, a great deal from the onset of the pandemic, and is still evolving. Um, I understand that the vaccine would uh, um, help if, if, if you catch COVID, and uh, you'll be able to have less symptoms um, from contracting it. But with me having COVID in the past and having antibodies, um, with my current um, age group and uh, uh, fitness, physical fitness level, um, it's not necessarily a fear of mine. Uh, taking the vaccine, um, like I said, it would decrease my chances of uh, uh, having a severe reaction, but it does open me up to the, albeit rare chance, but the possibility of having an adverse reaction to the vaccine itself. Um, I don't believe that being unvaccinated means infected or being vaccinated means um, uninfected. You can still catch COVID um, with or with not having the vaccine. Um, I would say, honestly, the, the, the craziness of it all in terms of not being able to say that it should be everybody's fair choice without being demeaned or um, talked crazy to doesn't uh, make one comfortable to do what said person is uh, telling them to do. Um, yeah, I, I would say that's, that's a couple of the reasons that, um, you know, I would say I, I'm hesitant at this time, but at the end of the day, uh, I don't feel that it is, um, you know, anyone's reason to come out and say, well, this is why or this is not why. It should just be their decision. And, um, you know, loving your neighbors, not just loving those that, that agree with you or look like you or uh, <laughs> moving the same way that you do. It's, it's uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, loving those who don't. Mm, that boy's mm, smart. That boy. <laughs> Apparently, That's he didn't smart, go to the church young of man. Kathy Hochul <laughs> right. up in New York. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yes, y'all heard about that. You 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 said that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he sounds good. That was yeah. great. First of all, should have just been like, I have medical privacy. Right, right. Let's yeah. stop there. But the fact that he could but, so eloquently break yeah. that down mm-hmm. is, which is the all of the points that we've been talking about for the longest. But mm-hmm. yeah. it's so crazy that well, first of all, you know, people think athletes are dumb, but this mm-hmm. dude is clearly not everybody intelligent. Liberal. <laughs> but, Stop it. <laughs> my opinion. <laughs> but what he's saying hits all the points. It's like they they want to force it on everybody, but it's like, yeah, it's it's <laughs> if you have the natural immunity, which has been banned from Instagram once again, <laughs> for those who don't know. Or follow the science. Yeah. Science is 
you get infected, you recover, you have antibodies. Right. T cell memory. Right. And if you have the vaccine, you can still get the virus and spread it. Which so. would make it not a vaccine. Well, now it is because they yeah, changed the they definition. changed the language. Now it's about immunization versus right. vaccine. Or getting mm-hmm. your body. They're two different things spark. now. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, all right. So something else. Libs, my favorite account, Libs of TikTok. <laughs> no, got no, something no. for you. Got something for you today. Here we go. This is a girl with half her hair long and half her hair short. <laughs> She's going to tell us about things that we need to learn. And bangs. Are y'all ready? I need y'all to understand that just because you've been conditioned to believe that private property rights, um, when I say private property, I mean property that is used for commercial purposes like factories and the machinery and um, commercial farming, private property rights we've been conditioned to believe are like the uh, of the utmost importance regardless of the material impacts of those private property rights so then when somebody starts to question those private property rights they can be dismissed as the bad guy immediately doesn't matter what they're saying doesn't matter that they're saying hey uh, private property rights really harm um, citizens really harm a massive portion of our population y'all will say no because I've been taught that private property rights are inherently good and anything that that rails against them is inherently bad and y'all need to realize that you've been indoctrinated with that and knock it the fuck off I need y'all to understand that just what the hell is she talking about She's talking about communism, bro. And uh, if you know anything about the Communist Manifesto, if you know anything about what's going on in China, if you know about what's, what Nomi Park was talking about in, in North Korea, you don't own private... You, there is no such thing as private property. Mm. You don't own any property. It's all government-owned. You lease it from them. So a lot of these like young socialist, communist-viewed people, they don't believe that we should own any property. And so what she's trying to do is is um, poke a hole in the concept of private property by using the idea of factory farming and corporations and things like that, which is like there's already regulations and stuff in place to stop these people from just doing whatever they want. A lot of them get away with it anyway because there's the corrupt government and politicians that they pay off and bribe and stuff like that. But they're not supposed to just be able to do whatever they want on their land. You know, but Mm -hmm. you as a private property owner, you do have certain rights. And when you start trying to go after the rights of property ownership in the name of stopping these corporations, all that does is bleed into the private citizens. Mm -hmm. That's all it does. Mm -hmm. And it hurts the smaller guy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And they're going to find ways to get around it. And what it's going to do is take property ownership away from us. Mm -hmm. You know, World Economic Forum. Yes. You will own nothing and you'll be happy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. People. The the natural um, the natural effect, I guess you could say, progression of what people do. Like when something ha- when when somebody does something, and you see the hypocrisy or you see the corruptness in what they're doing, the natural thing. It's just like my I'll never hit my kids because my dad hit me. Yeah, you know I'll never. I'm a, I'm gonna always tell my kids I love them. It's called the overcorrection. Because, mm. Exactly. The, the overcorrection, that's exactly what it is. Um, we'll always overcorrect. And, and the problem is what's in the way. Mm-hmm. It's always what has been put in our way that we can't stand to cause us to go too far mm-hmm. to the left or too far to the right. right. You know? yeah. um, and that's what you're seeing here. Like, this is what you're seeing with a lot of what's going on. Yes, there's corruption, but you don't change it yeah. by trying to go all the way the other way. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's not that taking away of property rights is going to fix the problem. Right. The corruption that's going to make room for more corruption. Right. Who's going to own mm-hmm. all the property at that point? All yeah. the people you hate, the people that you want to take down, are going to be the ones in ownership of all the property. Right. Mm-hmm. You know. You don't. You don't move on the right path by trying. You don't try to deal with all the obstacles. Right. You don't focus on every obstacle. Right. Because if you try to focus on every obstacle, you're going to be there for the rest of your life. Mm. Right. You you focus on the path. What's well, I'm going to bring this back to Jesus. Jesus is the way. Right. right? So he's like, focus on me. If we're always looking at what somebody did to me, Mm -hmm. what this one did, what that one did. Right. Oh, they trying to 
you know, even like Christians get to, oh, witchcraft. Yeah, they're they're right. they're they're throwing witchcraft at me. Little voodoo, Nas that X. voodoo, that voodoo. <laughs> yeah, little yeah. look at what little right. Nas. X. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Look at what yeah. they're doing. They're all just obstacles trying to come in your way to take your focus. What are you looking at? No, John John's about to go pee. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, bring it up. I was I was trying to I was trying to not show I was gonna bring it up, but I didn't want to show it because <laughs> Moan be cheating over here looking at my screen. So I don't get the val- it's val- right there. I don't so. get the valid reaction. So I wanted to show this other speaking of overcorrection, speaking of, you know, focusing on the wrong things. Mm. Um I wanted to get y'all reaction. This is another Libs of TikTok post. It was hilarious. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Yo, get your get your peoples, Mo. <laughs> he got a whole bag on his face. <laughs> oh my gosh. He's gotta be joking. That's gotta be a joke. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> he tries to look down. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so last week we had the one with the people that were eating through the mask, right? right? And y'all was right. like, that gotta be fake. That gotta be <laughs> fake. You th- like, like I'm telling you, people That's really sca- fake, super bro. scared Maybe, out here. That could be fake too. Dude, nah, he's just doing it to get a. <laughs> He you wants to go viral, bro. Get a ride. Yo, he wants to go viral. People are really scared out there. My man got a, he got a whole box of masks. And they're all like space. tied together. Like, <laughs> yo. I, I was coming out of the um, supermarket yeah. uh, yesterday. And this guy came in with two masks. And there was a guy leaving. He didn't have a mask. I, don't, I didn't have a mask. Right. He was like. Just he just started snapping. What? <laughs> it just started snapping, like yelling about these people can't just do one thing right. Like, <laughs> like, right. You ain't gotta wear a mask, bro. Uh, you're wearing two. You're, you're protected, yeah. but he's wearing two. Yeah, you're protected. You're vaccinated. You're good. Yes. That just reminds Shut me of the hell up. video. Don't worry about me. All right, here we go. Yes. Keeping it rolling. Chairs. Let's talk about. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> This person Already is going to explain look at his to glasses. Us. <laughs> his glasses. Nope, nope, no, no, no. How dare you, sir? Oh, I'm messed How up. How dare you? I'm messed up. It's them, their, her, right. his, their. And book. also, th- he's about to teach us about <laughs> sitting in chair privilege. Okay. Okay. Because uh, he's fat. When you're, when you're, excuse me, it's uh, <laughs> obese. You, it's, I don't even know what's the term. What is the it's, term? It's big Your people. body shaming. <laughs> Okay, it's you. big. It's a uh, uh, massively challenged. I don't know, like ma- ma- that boy fat. <laughs> he ate too much. Anyway, he's gonna explain to us. There's a lot of people teaching on TikTok. Y'all don't know. It's very educational. You learn. <laughs> you can learn a lot on TikTok, things. but you can learn a lot of yes. BS too. All right, here we go. Yes, chairs. Let's talk about chairs. Uh, full pun intended. Chairs are the biggest fucking issue in the fat community um the amount of public spaces like doctor's offices malls what the fuck ever places that have seating restaurants etc never ever have accessible seating some places just have stools or some places just have armed small dinky looking chairs as a fat person if you have never ever done the following things If you have never looked at a picture of a restaurant on Google Maps to try and figure out if the seating would be accessible to your size, if you've never broken a chair in a public space especially, um, if you've never had to second guess whether or not it was okay to sit down in the chairs provided to you, if you've never had a fucking panic attack at school because you couldn't fit into the goddamn chair desk situation, then you don't deal with fat phobia at the same level that the rest of us do. Fat phobia. And this is just one example. There are a plethora of other examples I could give you. But this one is really, really important. It's very important, guys. The fat community. Wow. That's, that's, Paul Horner that's just the said, virtue right now. You have not considered how much you are oppressing the fats <laughs> by having normal-sized chairs. And you need to stop, th- you need to stop being so selfish. 
Because I'm selfish. Need, you need to stop being selfish. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm the only one that can be selfish because right, I'm right, dealing with some right, stuff. Right, yeah. Right, you can't be right, selfish. Right. I've been to all your houses. The seating is not fat friendly. Okay. <laughs> I really want to. This is something that's weighing on my heart. I want to make sure that you guys <laughs> do something you. about I this. Y'all, something. I love y'all. And I don't want to see y'all go down this road of bigotry and hatred. <laughs> So I'm going to need to see some changes. I got a wide open floor you can sit on. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Y'all don't need... <laughs> it's just like... I can help you out, bro. <laughs> it's like the level of like, I want the world to fit into me. It and belongs I in Wally. I, I, yes. Mm. Yes. Wally. Yeah. Wally. Wally is a, a, Wally Wally is is a, a deep movie. That's yo. a deep movie. Yeah. Wally is a Good deep movie. movie. Yeah. A very underrated movie. But... It, this is the idea nowadays with a lot of these, all of this stuff, especially like Libs of TikTok, most of the stuff that they're complaining about or trying to teach people about is how to get the complaining world. Complaining about. Yeah. How to so, get the world to fit into what they want. What did we just talk about? Obstacles. Yeah. Anxiety is about not seeing a way out, right? Mm-hmm. All, these, all these people are just focused on the problems. They don't got their solution they saying, you need to find a solution yeah, for this, right? right. Th- their issue is that they can't see past themselves. It's all about their own self, mm-hmm. right? What's in my way? Moan, why are you wearing that army hurt? I'm hurt. Army hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say shirt, hat, hurt. Yeah. <laughs> why are you wearing that army hat? It offends me. I was in the army. You don't know what it was like to be an army. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can turn, or you can. The military is a fascist uh, mm-hmm. regime that uh, occupies nations that are disenfranchised. So your that hat offends, offends me. me yeah. You know, you got three stripes on your hat, Jamie. <laughs> yeah, those three it's stripes supremacy. represent to me <laughs> the whiteness of America. Mm. <laughs> Listen, that shading of blue in your. Captain America shield there. First of all, it's an American shield. That's um, offensive. That is offensive, sir. <laughs> and you, police are killing people. And I don't know if you know, but. <laughs> You're racist. You're racist. Oh, hey. Your shirt is racist. <laughs> What'd you say, so, Kyle? Kyle. So. Uh, <laughs> so there, Come on with it. All right. So there was, so I was, I was in D.C. Uh, for a, a Temptations and Four Tops concert that was going on. And we were all staying in the same hotel. And the percussionist that was playing for both groups had, was wearing a very laid-back version. It was, it was an authentic military uniform, but he was wearing it like a jumpsuit. Okay. In a hotel occupied by hundreds and hundreds of military personnel that were there for different reasons. Mm-hmm. You're talking about high-ranking folks. Yeah. And, and whether it be civilians... Or military, like he was just standing in the lobby wearing this. Wow, definitely uh, the subject of a lot of comments. Yeah, <laughs> uh, from civilians and military members alike about the about he he must have gotten that uniform from uh, from like a, like a secondhand store mm. and just and just thought it was cool to wear it. You know, well as, that's, as, that's different. Like if you're wearing a an authentic uniform, yeah, an authentic uniform around like a bunch of serv- like. Yeah, that's but that's, but he can do that because we live in America. Yeah, and he's allowed to do that. And if you get offended by it, that's it is the true. Thing. Did anybody like, pull his card? <coughs> What's that? Did anybody uh, shame him for uh, what is that called? Something colors, something of colors, or yeah, I know. What I wouldn't know. Uh, it's like wearing a fake uniform. Yeah. It's, yeah, they call it something. There's a term the for colors, it. Or I forget what it's called, but yeah. something along that line. Did anybody yeah. pull his card? I didn't pay attention that closely. Uh, I just, I just saw the, like the conversations happening so, around. But yeah, you know, he was, he was wearing a, you know, a, a backwards snapback and a, and some sneaks, and a very oversized army uniform. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, like Jake said, he's free to do it if you want to get mad at him. You can be mad. Yeah, you can burn the flag in this country. It's part <laughs> yeah. of being in America. Proud to be in America. Criticize your government without fear of repression. Exactly. Repression, People get offended depression. all the time. Like you, you're gonna. There's stuff that happens, and like I know ignorance 
can be offensive, right? People mm-hmm. don't know. Sometimes people just don't know, and they do something. And you're like, why would you do that? Mm. But they just don't know, and, mm-hmm. and it can be offensive. But my point is that we don't get nowhere by not showing people love, mm-hmm. right? And humbling ourselves sometimes to that because if we're always getting offended, there's a difference between like people stepping over the line, yeah. right? That's different. Right. Like people, people uh, coming into your territory, mm-hmm. you know, that's a different story. But with what they got, they can do whatever they want over there, you know, and we just keep the, we, we just draw the line where, where we're at. Right. Um, Speaking of people coming in territory, did you guys see the video that leaked of of the uh, insurrection? The people oh. storming in and 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 rummaging and 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 sieging our country. They actually released the footage. He's talking about January, brace yourself, January sixth. Brace yeah. yourself, guys. I'm about to show you this. All right, horrifying, let's see these horrifying devils. Scenes. Show you this horrifying scene coming at democracy. As you can see, there is tons of people. Taking pictures on cell phones with guns and, and knives drawn, and no, they just have cell phones. Oh, and <laughs> they're just they got duct tape walking around. They have zip ties for handcuffs. Just kind of like oh, there's there's, a lot of red hats though. There's, there's a red hat, <laughs> and they're racist. There's a flag there, so they deserve to be in jail for the rest of their lives without due process. Just want to show you that it's highly wow. offensive video. All right, one more Where's thing. Where's the guns? I don't see no <laughs> guns. Yeah, we, we know. We know. We know. It's an insurrection, though. Yeah, it is an, an armed yeah. insurrection. I want to show you guys this. Uh, speaking of being offended. Oh, I saw this. You saw this? Yeah. This is your other people's. The other guy who embarrassed you. <laughs> yeah. This, this one is going to make is you honorable. Proud. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see this, Stan? No. So, um, she's a patriot. There's, this is a woman on a New York train. Uh oh. Um, there's a bunch of advertisements for OK Cupid that are like super weird and sexual. Yes. And like very weird. So she was just like, she goes on the train and she's just like, what is this? Like there's kids on here and she just starts ripping down all the, um, the things. <laughs> nice. And someone starts filming her like, this woman's a hero. <laughs> just look at that. Look at that. There's tongues. Yeah. There's tongues. That describe it because I can't see it from far. One of them was like okay, one so tongue. I'll pause it so you can one see. One tongue kinda. going into a mouth. So, oh, so you I see, see right there. Yes, okay. It's two people and their tongues are becoming one tongue together yeah. as one. Uh, yeah. Normalizing. Normalizing. Like yeah. the next generation. Yeah, no, like, no and it's on both sides know. of the train. It's all over the place. Like. Told them not so he to, said not you're to too get sensitive. Up, not to get upset no. Wear the mask. no, he said it's desensitizing. Oh, yeah. Let's go to the back. I mean, serious. We're in the worst, actually. Uh, I saw one of them. It was like an apple. Yeah, that one right that there. One. Yeah, look at that. Come on. What is that? Pretty long finger. That's a long <laughs> ass finger. <laughs> what does that mean? Like something nasty. That's, that's pretty good. Look at this one. New York. New York. Romantic. Yeah, look at that. Pansexual. I'm not going to participate in this. That's what the Chinese want. They're trying to divide and conquer us. The government is against us. You said the government is against us. They're trying to divide and conquer us. Mm-hmm. You don't see it. Yeah, she said that's what the Chinese want. Yeah. yeah. And if you go up and if you go and look look up the OK Cupid um, advertisements, there's a like that whole strip is just all just weird imagery, sexual stuff, mm. and it's just like out there in the public. Who cares? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But it's imagery, so yeah. it places it in your head. Yeah, exactly. And you get used to seeing right. it, and it's yeah. nothing. 
Propaganda, Propaganda man. Propaganda, man. Programming. Yeah. Programming. Yeah. All right, that's all I'm going to show, guys. I got a couple more things, but it don't matter. We, 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 uh, it's 10 20, so let's wrap it up. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, zip it up and zip it out. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks for, uh, you know, going down memory lane with us a little bit. Kyle, you are not leaving here with that CD. <laughs> I know you keep thinking, what's up, Emma? Emma said, hey, guys. What up, Emma? Uh, we all needed grace extended to us at some point, Deanna said. Jessica Ray. Uh, impersonating not okay. I don't know what that means. Deanna, oh, man. Yeah. you means the the officer. officer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah man, we are making up a lot now. Man, we are making making up a lot now. Oh, no. oh she's talking about the um, <laughs> she's talking about the uh, the um person explaining the chair the chair oppression. Uh -huh. Um, all right. Shout out to everybody who tuned in. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to share the video. Hit the like button for us, please. Also, Patreon. I forgot to mention it earlier. If you want to support, if you want to be a member, if you want to support what we're doing, because we're not out here selling CDs anymore. So we <laughs> do have to do this other ways. Um, but being a member on Patreon helps us out. And we same concept. We put everything that we get back into what we're building here. As the Young Lion community, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Young Lion TV, sign up to any one of these tiers that you are comfortable with and become a member. And uh, we're going to be putting exclusive content on there. We already got some stuff up. We got other stuff that we're working on. We're going to be putting exclusive content on there, exclusive music, exclusive vi videos, um, all that stuff. And also, you can go to our website, jatan.com. You can, be, you can uh, get merch and all of our new music. Our, that's our new single, Darling, that's up there right now. And Where Do We Go, which is another great song that is so, so uh, apropos for the time that we're in. Um, check out the live performances on there. And also, get some merch if you want to get this lovely T-shirt that Simone has here. And um, <laughs> he's... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can get it on the website <laughs> and also subscribe on YouTube. Shout out to if you're on YouTube, subscribe on there. We're trying to get the YouTube numbers up. Um, look at all those cool thumbnails Simone's been making for us. They're dope. Um, so, you. so, so sign up, uh, subscribe on YouTube. Shout out to the people watching on Twitch. We appreciate all of you guys. Uh, we'll see you next week. God willing. And mm -hmm. we're out. Young line go live, yeah. Young line, you rich, yeah. This kingdom has room, yeah. Go and fight people now.